I'm Miles. I'm a senior manager of product management here at Snowflake. I run our developer platform. So that's the drivers, the Terraform provider, Snowgit integration, um, data projects, which you'll hear about in a little bit, um, and a few other odds and ends. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes a little bit uh, less shiny things than you see day to day, but a pretty critical part of what runs Snowflake. Um, but today I'm going to talk to you about a number of different things. Um, we think a lot about DevOps and the general software development lifecycle. Um, in my career, I've worked at GitHub, I've worked at Google, I've done a lot with uh, developer tools and thinking about workflows and how we streamline things. And that's something we're investing big time in at Snowflake right now. Um, and can I see a raise of hands? How many people have seen um, this drawing or a drawing like this before? So we've got the right people. It's the inner and the outer loop. It's how you do your day-to-day -day job. The inner loop being the things that you do on your own machine or maybe in a cloud machine, but as you're developing in real time, you want feedback about what you're working on, how you're working. You want to understand really quickly you know, if things are working, what's not working, being able to work on that. And then when you're done and you're ready to integrate with the rest of your team, you have the outer loop. That's how you deploy, how you release, how you review. Um, and at least my experience, I'm actually fairly new to the data world. Uh, as I mentioned, I was doing mostly applications and systems previously. But it doesn't seem like there's as clear systems in place for doing this kind of really great software development lifecycle uh, for data today. And that's one of the things that we're consistently investing in. And there's a lot of challenges when it comes um, to data and DevOps. Um, so for example, not a lot of the ways in which we define things are declarative. These imperative ways of creating databases are not only error prone, but hard to reproduce. Coordinating changes across large groups of people can become really, really hard. Um, when you don't have ways to reproduce your infrastructure, you end up having many different environments which significantly increase the cost of your operations. And there's also a cost to integrate with many different third-party tools and platforms. And that cost can be a physical cost, it can be a mental cost, and just a time cost when it takes a lot of time to get these things working properly. Um, one of the things that we've worked on within Developer Platform to really help with this is the Terraform provider. Um, how many people in the audience use Terraform today? Awesome. Terraform's a phenomenal way. It's an infrastructure as code tool, if you're not familiar with it. It allows you to define your infrastructure um, in a declarative way and then apply that infrastructure um, to different cloud environments, whether that be AWS or, in our case, Snowflake. So we as Snowflake have a um, Terraform provider that we make available uh, through the uh, Terraform registry. Um, and it's, you know, as it says on here, it's an industry standard tool. It's a great way to have repro reproducible infrastructure uh, deployments. You can write a desired state in a file. You can plan and test to see, hey, what changes are going to happen, and then apply those changes. Um, and one of the new things that we're working on right now, which is an internal Snowflake tool, is called Snowflake Data Projects. And this is an infrastructure as code solution directly from Snowflake to help you manage your Snowflake infrastructure and objects. You can see a little bit here about what the flow would look like if you're doing it directly in SQL. You would create a project. You upload the files of the project, which you can leverage Jinja templating for, into a stage. You version that stage so that you have versions that you can roll back to. Um, and then you execute that project to deploy it to production. And it's really cool because when uh, entities are managed by a data project, um, they become immutable. So you can't just drop things. You can't just change things. It offers a level of stability and expectations that you can't really get otherwise. And if you're managing that through Git, for example, and deploying through CI CD, you're starting to get a step towards having like real provenance over your data infrastructure. I don't know if I'm going to have time today. I can see I've already gone through five minutes. Um, but I'm doing a longer version of this talk on Thursday during the developer day, where I'll have demos. And uh, come find me afterwards, and I could show you as well if I run out of time. Um, but all of this is built on top of Creator Alter. If you've seen Creator Alter yet, we've had this out for a little bit. Um, this allows you to manage your DDL scripts in source control so you can create or alter, alter a table. So in an imperative way, you may like create a table and then alter the table. Later on, you wanted to make a change to it, you would alter it. Um, with Creator Alter, you have a single statement that you use. And we in the back end figure out how to 
take table in the state A and make it state B. So if you're defining things, leveraging create or alter, you're only ever defining that infrastructure once. And you can see how this is the foundation to creating a more declarative infrastructure. But it doesn't give you everything else that I was talking about. That comes through define and execute. And so now this shows you a bit of how the Snowflake projects look on the inside. You use this new define syntax, and you can see that we've also got the Jinja templating there as well, to define the various entities that you want to have deployed to Snowflake. You init, and you can see here this is showing how to do it with the CLI. You init a project, you create a version, um, you can validate it or dry run, and dry run super cool. You can run it, and it will tell you exactly what changes are going to be made after you run execute. You run execute to actually apply those changes to your infrastructure. And so this is the foundation of how we've built Snowflake data projects. Um, I mentioned the CLI, and the CLI is the foundation for so much. I love CLIs. Um, I find them really intuitive to me. Um, from my background in development and app development, um, I find writing commands and writing little bash one-liners way easier than writing SQL. You can judge me all you want, but that's just me. Bash makes sense to my brain. I can pipe things uh, left and right. And the Snowflake CLI is a great way to get a lot done um, right in the command line. And that pairs really great with CI CD. So if you're a GitHub user, for example, you're using GitHub Actions, um, we have a, a GitHub Action for Snowflake that instruments your action with the Snowflake CLI. You set up the right uh, environment variables. Uh, there's another talk I'm giving on Thursday all about doing this kind of operations and CI CD with data projects. So join for that. We can get more into the specifics. Um, but you can also use the CLI for managing all sorts of different things, running from streamlets to SPCS, Snowpark, native apps, um, SnowSQL, DBT projects, and uh, the new Snowflake data projects, which are coming soon. So uh, if you were paying attention this morning, you may have seen us announce Workspaces, which is really exciting. It's a cloud IDE built into Snowflake uh, to just make it far, to make you far more productive at getting what you need to get done. Um, for myself, you know, like I often reach for VS Code or sometimes even Vim, I'm not an Emacs guy, sorry for those of you who are. Um, but sometimes I want to just do work where I am. And if I'm in Snowflake and I'm wanting to like look at a table or I want to just like not have to worry about setting up my environment, it's really powerful to just be able to do things you know, right where you're working. And Workspaces is just phenomenal. Like I, I don't get the kind of things I get um, from Workspaces in VS Code. You have an area to manage all of your different projects and SQL files. Um, you've got an area to easily filter and see all the objects in, in your uh, Snowflake instance. Um, you, this, you can use split panes, so you can have files side by side, which is really great. You can see the results at the bottom in columns, so this really helps with data visualization as you're working with data, that's pretty critical. Um, and there's a number of features that are available today. Um, improved SQL experience for charts and filters, and we've also got Git integration. This is built on top of the Snowflake Git integration. Um, that we have available today. Um, there's a new way of setting up uh, GitHub that's now available where you can do it via OAuth. So we've got a Snowflake OAuth app that you can install that makes it really, really uh, straightforward to get a Git repo into a workspace. But you can bring a, a Git repo into the workspace um, and work on things that you've already got and you probably saw, and we'll talk in a second about DBT projects, but if you're writing DBT, you got that in GitHub right now, or any Git repo on the internet, you can bring that right in to workspaces. Um, we've got a visual diff tool. We've got conflict resolution and branch management. So you could be working right in your workspace and push those uh, changes upstream back to your original repo so you can go through and use all the governance and review tools that you use for managing code. Uh, on the roadmap and coming soon for workspaces includes notebook integration, which is going to be really cool when you can just have notebooks right in your workspace. Um, better sharing and collaboration tools so you can share workspaces within your teams and across team members, more improvements for SQL, and of course, um, broader Python and um, Streamlit support. Um, for notebooks, um, I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with notebooks, what we have off the shelf today, and why you would use it, so I'm not going to belabor those points. But it's great that you can create notebooks directly into Snowflake. And one of the new things that we've got is the ability to leverage the container runtime, uh, especially if you're doing machine learning. So you can really set up the exact environment that you need to execute and run 
your notebooks, and you can schedule those notebooks to run. So if you're using notebooks as part of a, a pipeline or as part of your operations, we've got everything that you need right in Snowflake in order to do it. Um, as I mentioned, there's now new environment options. So that's both the warehouse environment option, but now the container services environment option. So you really helps with running complex AI and ML workloads, allows you to have access to broader um, CPU and GPU solutions. Um, and this is GA on both AWS and Azure, and which is really exciting, available in trial accounts um, as well. So Streamlit is a great tool that we have for building data applications. Um, it's an open source Python library. It's been part of Snowflake for a while. It allows you to turn data and AI ML models into interactive applications that you can share within your organizations. Um, the biggest difference, the bi biggest things that we've launched recently um, with Streamlit is support for multi-file editing, which is really great. It's a great ergonomic update, as well as the public preview for the Git integration. So the same integration that we're leveraging for workspaces and for notebooks. So now if you're using Git uh, to manage your source control, you can have this directly integrated into all these various editing environments directly inside of Snowflake. And we've also got open source parity uh, with support for 1.44 in SIS, which is uh, GA. So I've mentioned the Git integration a couple times, so we should maybe get a little bit more into like what does that even mean. Um, so the Git integration allows you to build collaboratively through native Git. You can connect from Snowflake to a number of different Git providers, whether that be GitHub, Azure DevOps, Bitbucket, AWS Code Commit, GitLab, or now, and this is a new feature, any custom URL. So any public fa facing Git server, you can bring into Snowflake to work on. So you know, if you've got you know, a NAS in your basement that's connected to the open internet, and that's how you like to do things, you, you can go ahead and do that. And once you have those, the Git repo staged into Snowflake, you can now use that to connect to a number of different things. So that does back, as I mentioned, the implementations that we have of SnowGit in notebooks and workspaces in Streamlit. Um, but you can also use it with execute immediate from um, as part of a pipeline, and there's a number of different use cases here for it. Um, one thing that is coming very soon is support for private link. So if you're using private networking for your uh, Git servers, you're going to be able to bring those in. I know that's a huge ask from a number of enterprises. If you have questions about that, feel free to grab me. Um, we're going to be having some Terraform configuration available out of the box because I don't know if you've ever tried to set up network configuration rules yourself on AWS, but it's uh, not fun. Now, um, programmatic access tokens are a new feature that I'm really excited about. Um, connecting services to Snowflake can be difficult, including even just your own machine, um, especially as we're moving towards a world with MFA enforcement um, we really want to make sure that we have the best practices in place for securely communicating and managing your sessions. A really great thing with programmatic access tokens is you can scope them to particular roles. You can set um, policies around them about uh, expiration. And additionally, it's really easy to um, revoke or re-roll a programmatic access token if you need to. Um, this is far more secure than basic <laughs> authentication, and in my opinion, a lot easier to reason about um, than key pair. Um, I have an aversion to OpenSSL, so take that as a bias. Um, but programmatic access tokens just make sense to me. Um, you can make them directly in your UI. The only real caveat and thing to know about this is that programmatic access tokens do require both a network and auth authentication policy to be created. Um, you can opt out of that uh, network policy if your admin allows it. Um, but in, on Thursday, I'll show there's ways to streamline setting up these uh, network policies so that you can make sure you can connect uh, securely whatever service you want to connect to Snowflake through a programmatic access token. The other thing that security has been working on, which I find infinitely interesting, is Workload Identity Federation, or WIF. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to see less hands, but is anyone here familiar with WIF? So WIF is what allows you to make claims from one service, make a um, statement about that claim on the other service, and then negotiate for credentials. It's very similar to OAuth, but a little bit different. What was really cool about this is what we're going to be able to build with it. So GitHub Actions, if you look up GitHub Actions OIDC or OpenID Connect, you're able to make a claim 
in this case it would be on Snowflake or it could be on AWS, about, hey, if I get a request from a particular repository in a particular workflow, then they have access to this role and these permissions. So you make that claim once on Snowflake, and then you never manage credentials on the other part at all. So this would mean that you could set up once a claim about what can be published inside of Snowflake and federate that identity across other providers. Um, I'm kind of hand-waving around this because it's a little more complicated than I'm describing. But what's awesome about this and some of the things that, I, that we're building right now, at least in my perspective, it's too hard to connect between different services right now and set things up. The number of policies that you need to set up and the number of times you need to poke an admin is far too many. Um, and I can't promise that tomorrow when you wake up, it's going to be magically better. But it is better than it was yesterday. And in the near future, it's going to be even better. So I would keep your eyes peeled for the things that we're building on top of these um, building blocks. I'm really, really excited about it. Um, for MFA methods, we're, we've also launched a whole bunch of new MFA methods, which will make it far better to do two-factor authentication. Uh, pass keys in particular are super cool. If you're a user of like one password, for example, you can store pass keys inside of one password and then use one password to kind of federate those, those pass keys. Um, you may have feelings about it, so you can use physical keys or other forms of MFA as well. And we also support authenticated apps, so you're not stuck with only Duo um, if you want to be doing uh, MFA now. <laughs> um, Snowflake, OpenFlow, I can't do this justice. If you saw the demo this morning, you saw how amazingly cool it is. Uh, OpenFlow is just making it so much easier to, do, to get all these different connectors and data into Snowflake. Um, I, I'm going to have to move forward because I'm running out of time. Um, but again, come Thursday, I'll have more information. Look up the talks about OpenFlow. This is all built on top of NiFi and streamlines getting data into Snowflake. Uh, one of the last things I want to talk about today is DBT projects on Snowflake. Um, they are self-service in that you manage it yourself. It, it integrates into the observability of Snowflake, which is super cool. So you can see exactly what happens when you're running your DBT projects. You're able to govern them through all the RBAC of Snowflake, and you have the you know, reliability of us managing it for you. Um, you. You're able to build, test, schedule, deploy, and monitor your DBT projects all directly inside of Snowflake. Today, this is built on top of DBT Core, but we are already in conversations and working on support for Fusion as that uh, begins to hit the market. So uh, keep your uh, eyes peeled for more information about that uh, as it gets out there. Um, Snowflake tasks, if you're not familiar, are a great way to schedule. We have a lot of new things going on with tasks today. Um, in particular, we've got serverless tasks and more, more releases around task graphs. If you want to be creating pipelines and doing things directly inside of Snowflake, uh, tasks pair really great with DBT objects, for example. The combination of the DBT projects and serverless tasks can do away with a ton of custom infrastructure that you may have had to manage um, in order to uh, keep those things running. Um, but a quick recap. I've got one minute on the timer, so <laughs> that's why you can see me blasting through it at this point. I've got a bunch that we've been investing in the software development lifecycle. That's both the inner and the outer loop, giving you tools for managing your infrastructure and your projects, and giving you the building blocks that you need to, as teams to collaborate efficiently. We're giving you the building blocks for building amazing data engineering pipelines directly on Snowflake, and we're consistently investing as well in the security of our platform to ensure that you can do all of that following secure best pra industry practices. So with that, I'm going to skip the demo, but we can maybe talk afterwards, and that's it for right now. Thank you so much for coming and giving me your time.